Good morning, everyone. Myself, Dr. Manish Thong, Associate Professor of Physics, School of Basic and Applied Sciences, Maharaja Agastini University, Badi, Madhya Pradesh. Today's topic of discussion is superconductivity. I will cover up history and fundamentals of the superconductivity. So, in this presentation, initially we will discuss the history of superconductivity, then the zero resistivity, the concept of Meissner effect. Magnetic effects and later the types of superconductors and applications. So let's discuss what what is superconductivity. Superconductivity refers to the flow of electrical current in a material with zero resistance. So as you know, the basic fundamental of resistance, resistance is the opposition to the flow of electrons. So, if resistance becomes zero, then you can say the current will flow without any hindrance. So, to make it clear, let's see this diagram. In this diagram, which is a graph between the resistance and temperature, and temperature is increasing from left to right. Uh, it is showing a resistance temperature behavior of a normal material or non superconductive metal and a superconductive material. In the non superconductive metal, as you can see, that as the temperature decreases, the resistance is also decreasing gradually. And as soon as the temperature is uh, reaching to 0 Kelvin, the resistance has some residual value. Whereas in case of the superconductor, as you can see, the with the decrease in the temperature, at certain temperature, resistance of the material suddenly drops to zero. Here you can see up to this range, up to this temperature range, the resistivity is decreasing gradually, but as soon as at this point, the resistance drops suddenly to a lower value. So, uh, the material that means the material is showing zero resistance at this point and it becomes superconductor at this temperature. The phenomenon of superconductivity was first discovered by Kamerlin Kunz in 1911 while he was studying the electrical resistance of mercury at very low temperatures. So, uh, in 1911, Kamerlin Ohms finds that at 4.2 Kelvin, mercury resistance suddenly drops to zero. As you can see in this graph, as the temperature is decreasing and as soon as it comes near to 4.2 Kelvin, its resistance suddenly drops to a very lower value of 10 raised to power minus 5 Ohms and further decrease in temperature will retain this value to this lower value. So, this state of very low resistance is known as a zero resistance state. The temperature range where resistance is very small of the order of 10 raised to power minus 5 or smaller, then that state is known as the zero resistance state or we can say the uh, resistance of the material drops to zero. So, in case of mercury, you can see the transition temperature. Transition temperature means the temperature at which material exhibits zero resistance or the it is also known as a critical temperature denoted by Tc. The transition temperature in case of mercury it is 4.2 Kelvin. One another important factor that is zero electrical resistance. Now, the zero, what is the meaning of this zero electrical resistance? Zero electrical resistance, the most important application is that is superconductors can vary current without energy loss. So, that means if we um, carry current in superconductors, then there will not be any energy loss and the current will flow forever in that material. Now, let us discuss the Meissner effect. In 1933, Walter Meissner and Robert Oceanfield discovers that a superconducting material repels the magnetic field. 
Later, this phenomenon was named as Meissner effect. As you can see, there is a red-colored uh, ball in the material which is representing the normal state of the material, and this these lines are showing the magnetic field. So, as you can see in the normal state, magnetic lines of force are passing through the material. Magnetic lines of force are passing through the material, and this. Uh, state of the normal state of this material is also indicated by this temperature relation where T is greater than Tc. So above Tc the material will be in the normal state and below Tc the material will be in the superconducting state. So if we cool down this material to a lower temperature then you uh, we can see in this diagram this blue colored ball is showing the lower temperature and the material becomes in the superconducting state. Here, the temperature relation is also showing that T is less than Tc. So, in the Meissner effect, as soon as the material comes in the superconducting state, the magnetic lines of force are expelled by the material. So, in the normal state, the magnetic lines of force are passing through the material. But as soon as the material comes in the superconducting state, the magnetic lines of force are expelled by the material. This phenomenon is known as Meissner effect. So, in simple words, we can say that the Meissner effect is the expulsion of the magnetic field by a superconductor in the superconducting state or when it is cooled below the critical temperature. This expulsion will repel a nearby magnet. And this uh, phenomenon, the effect of uh, discovered by Walter Misner and Robert Oshenfield, are the basis for the maglev trains, or commonly known as the bullet trains. In 1957, first widely accepted theory on superconductivity was given by John Burden, Leon Cooper, and John Schiffer, which is uh, famous as the BCS theory. In 1962, Brian D. Josephson predicted that electrical current would flow between two superconducting materials even when they are separated by a non superconductor or insulator. So, this was known as the Josephson effect. In 1986, Alex Muller and George Bednor created the first superconducting cuprate, that is, lanthanum barium cuprate whose critical temperature is 30 Kelvin. They got the Nobel Prize in 1987 for their discovery and later uh, all the material whose transition temperature is above 30 Kelvin, they uh, are separately categorized as high temperature superconductors. In 1987, discovery of Yttrium barium cuprate took place. It is a material that superconducts at temperatures above the temperature of liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is a commonly available coolant whose temperature is 77 Kelvin. So, liquid nitrogen um, gave us uh, opportunity to study and explore the properties of superconductors at much higher temperature, which is 77 Kelvin instead of a very uh, uh, low temperature which is close to 0 Kelvin. The current world record for the critical temperature of the superconducting material is 138 Kelvin which is held by a very complex compound of mercury, tellurium, barium, copper, calcium, oxide. So, now let's come to the effects of magnetization. A material superconducting state can also be destroyed by external magnetic field called the critical magnetic field. As we have discussed earlier, that superconducting state is bound by the temperature, where transition temperature or the critical temperature denoted as Tc is that boundness below Tc. The material will lie in the superconducting state and above Tc the material will lie in the normal state. But one another factor that is the magnetic field that is 
that can also destroy the superconducting state of the material. Here in this diagram, you can see the superconducting state is bound by basically two parameters. One is the magnetic field, which is along y axis, and another is the temperature, which is along x axis. So, the uh, superconducting state here, uh, Tc, is the critical temperature, and below this temperature, the uh, material is lying in the superconducting state. When material is cooled to Tc or below Tc, uh, say some uh, lower temperature than Tc, then to destroy that superconducting state by application of the magnetic field, we need some value to destroy that uh, superconducting state. And as we lower this Tc, critical temperature, uh, as we lower the temperature of the superconducting state, we need some stronger value of the Hc. So, there is a particular relation to determine the Hc based upon the Tc value. So, this critical magnetic field Hc can be determined for a material uh, and it is equal to Hc at T is equal to 0 into 1 minus T square by Tc square. So, this relation defines the value of Hc based upon the value of Tc of a material. Uh, as you can see in this diagram, for different materials, this curve is shown. Now, moving on. On the type of semiconductors, there are two types of semiconductors, type 1 and type 2, according to their behavior in the magnetic field. Let's discuss first type 1 or the soft superconductors. Type 1 superconductors. As you can see in this diagram, uh, magnetization is along the y-axis and applied magnetic field is along x-axis. Here, this shaded area is showing the superconducting state and as we go on increasing the applied magnetic field, the magnetization is increasing linearly. And at certain value of magnetic field, that is Hc, this uh, superconducting state is destroyed and the material becomes normal. This transition is very sudden or abrupt. And uh, the materials where this transition is very sudden or abrupt, they are known as the type 1 superconductor. So, type, uh, transition from superconducting state to the normal state in type 1 semiconductors is very abrupt. Or you can also say in other words that type 1 semiconductors, uh, superconductors follow Meissner effect strictly. Generally, the type 1 superconductors are all are pure materials or the elemental materials. As you can see in the periodic table, there are uh, two colored uh, materials are shown in two colors. One is the blue and other is the green. The blue colored materials can be made superconducting by lowering their temperature at ambient pressure. But the green color material requires very high pressure along with the low temperatures. So, uh, this is basically uh, giving us idea of the third parameter which is controlling the superconducting state. First one is the temperature, second one is the magnetic field and third one is the pressure. But we will not discuss uh, this parameter in detail and uh, moving on here we will uh, now discuss the type 2 or the hard superconductors. In this diagram as you can see if we increase the magnetic field of a material which is in the superconducting state, then at this point, at this particular point here, the magnetization of the material starts decreasing gradually. And as we go on increasing the applied magnetic field, this magnetization will go on decreasing gradually and it becomes zero at this value. So, the type 2 superconductors 
have a different kind of transition which is gradual not like a type 1 superconductors where the transition is sudden or abrupt so in this case the point where the magnetization starts decreasing is marked as the initial critical magnetic field and denoted as hc1 and the second point where the magnetization becomes zero and the material comes into the normal state that is marked as the final critical magnetic field and denoted as hc2 so type 2 superconductors have two types of two values of the critical magnetic field hc1 and hc2 below hc1 the material is in the perfect superconducting state in between hc1 and hc2 the material is in the mixed state where it will behave as normal as well as, as, well as a superconducting state and above hc2 the material will behave in the normal state and the type 2 superconductors are generally alloys and compounds of different materials if we compare the type 1 and type 2 superconductors as you can see in this diagram the type 1 uh, superconductors the type 1 superconductors show a abrupt or sudden decrease in the magnetization or transition to the normal state so they have only one critical value of the magnetic field whereas the type 2 superconductors shows the gradual decrease in the magnetization or transition is gradual to the normal state so they show two values of the critical magnetic field hc1 and hc2 also the type 2 superconductors have much higher critical magnetic fields than type 1 as you can see in this diagram mercury which is a type 1 or the elemental material its transition temperature or the critical temperature is 4.15 kelvin whereas if we compare this temperature to a type 2 superconductor which is a alloy of niobium and tin then its transition temperature is 18 kelvin and also the value of critical magnetic field for mercury is 0 0.041 tesla whereas for niobium tin it's 24.5 tesla so type 2 superconductors have much higher critical magnetic fields and uh, they can be employed in more practical applications now let's come to the bcs theory so the bcs theory was given by uh, trio john berlin leon cooper and bob schiffer this trio got nobel prize in 1972 for their theory given in 1957 which explained conventional superconductors and also it was the first microscopic theory which gave basis for the superconductivity the bcs theory deals with the behavior of electrons in the superconducting material at very low temperatures the low temperature minimizes the vibrational energy of individual atoms in the crystal lattice when electron moving freely through the material encounters less impedance or resistance due to less vibrational distortion of lattice at low temperature now let's discuss a bcs theory as uh, consider an electron is moving in the crystal lattice then electron being a negatively charged entity when it passes through the crystal lattice it will attract uh, it will attract the positively charged ions of the crystal material because of coulomb attraction and it creates the reason of increased positive charge density or you can say it is the lattice distortion as shown in the uh, in this diagram through this shaded area with the red color now as the uh, electron is passing this crystal it creates this distorted distortion in the lattice or we can say the reason of increased positive charge density now the reason of increase increased positive charge density propagates through the crystal as a phonon 
and when another passing by electron second electron which is passing uh, through this distorted uh, crystal lattice it feels attraction to this increased positive charge density region so we can say the uh, electron 2 is being attracted by the electron 1 through the lattice distortion so this electron 1 is attracting the electron 2 through the lattice distortion or we can say the first electron is interacting with the second electron through a phono the theory uh, gives that these interacting electrons paired through a phono having less energy to bring more stable state and acts like a single entity this single entity comprising of two electrons and a phonon is known as a cooper pair this uh, attraction between the two electrons is a very unusual phenomena as the two oppositely charged particles are overcoming their coulomb repulsion and experiencing an attraction through phonon exchange so the electrons in the cooper pair possesses anti parallel spin resulting in a total spin of zero for the pair and it acts like a boson bosons are the particle that have integral spin including zero and their energy distribution is described by bose einstein statistics statistics so this bcs theory was the first basic fundamental or microscopic theory which gave explanation to the phenomena of superconductivity now let's discuss the applications uh superconductivity has many application in different areas like uh, electrical power transmission superconducting materials can carry large electric current without any losses of energy due to resistance this property makes them ideal for high power transmission cables reducing energy losses during long distance electricity transmission the second very important application is in the area of medical diagnostics the magnetic resonance imaging in the magnetic resonance imaging or mri machines uh, superconductors are used to uh, create large um, magnetic fields these magnets produces precise and detailed images of internal body structures aiding in magnet uh, medical diagnostics another uh, most important application of uh, the superconductors in the transportation that is magnetic levitation or the maglev trains which are commonly known as the bullet trains the superconducting materials can trap and maintain magnetic field in a stable position allowing for magnetic levitation of the trains maglev trains float above the track eliminating friction and enabling high speed and energy efficient transportation Uh, and uh, superconductors are also used in the energy storage they can deliver high power bursts of electricity quickly making them suitable for applications like power grid stabilization and backup power supply during outages another applications uh, are lying in the high speed digital electronics magnetic resonance spectroscopy fusion reactors superconducting quantum interference devices and the particle accelerators so this is a brief uh, about the history and fundamentals of the superconductors or superconducting theory so in the next class we will discuss about the further uh, details so thank you thank you everyone